Hey there. Today we're going to be modeling a simple box with a lid as our first Fusion 360 project. In order to do it, we're going to get up close and personal with one of the coolest parts of sketching in Fusion 360. Constraints, dimensioning, and making sure your sketch is fully defined. Let's jump right in. Now to start, I need to make sure that I'm back in my sketch workspace. So I'm going to go back to my base sketch, double click, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag from right to left, press the delete key, and clear out all of our extra geometry. Now let's start sketching our box. I'm going to click up here and choose our line tool. I'm going to draw ahead our four lines, and I'm just going to click anywhere. Again, looks kind of like a wonky box right now, but we can fix all of that with our constraints. So I'm going to go ahead and press escape, get rid of our line tool, and start fixing this design. First off, constraints. These are like the rules of the road for our sketches, and we're going to use them to keep everything in line, uh, quite literally. I'm going to click on this line here. It looks a little crooked, so I'm going to go ahead and click up to our constraints and make sure that we choose for it to stay horizontal. I'm going to do the exact same thing over here to our sides. So now we've got a rectangle. We can drag our box all around and notice all of our sides are constantly saying straight up and down. Constraints are all about relationships. In this case, I constrained these lines in reference to our overall coordinate system for them to be perfectly straight up and down or straight side to side. But if I were to delete those constraints, I could actually constrain these lines relative to any object, not just our overall coordinate system. I could pick these two lines to be parallel to each other with the parallel tool. And in this case, I end up with some sort of weird, like, uh, I think it's a rhombus. Now, for us, that's not quite normal. We want it to be straight up and down. So I could also say, all right, I want these two lines to be parallel, and then I want this line and this line to be perpendicular. In order for me to do that, I'd go up here, choose our perpendicular constraint, and now I've got our rectangle again. So as we can see, there are multiple ways to reach the same outcome. It's just about what you think is most useful for your design. Now, dimensioning. We introduced this in our last video, but this is where we get specific and we start to tell Fusion just how big we want each object to be. In this case, I'm gonna choose this one side and I'm gonna tell it, I want you to be exactly 200 millimeters long. I press enter and now our line is 200 millimeters. If you ever want to double check how long something is, you can just select it and it will tell you down here in the bottom, length 200. Or you can go up here to our inspection, choose our measure tool, and then select the same object. It will tell you the exact same information right here. Now notice I can still grab our box and drag it around anywhere. And that's probably not a good thing for our design. We want to have our base of our object anchored down at a specific point and only move when we tell it to. So in this case, I'm going to decide to anchor our line to this point right here. In order for me to do that, I'm going to use a coincident constraint. A coincident constraint just says I want to the, whatever objects I select to be at the same point. I want them to be touching each other. I want them to be coincident. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this point right here. And then I'm going to just left click on this point right here. And notice a couple things just happened. One, we moved our box over. But two, our box turned black on the outside. It was blue. I'm going to undo just so you can see it. Blue to black. This black line means this shape is fully defined. I can click anywhere on it and it will not move. It will not drag around. No object of that geometry is a variable. When every line and every point knows exactly where it needs to be, that's when we have a fully defined sketch. Everything is what we've told it to be. We can also see that over here in our sketch dropdown, we now have this little lock icon over our drawing. That means our sketch is fully defined and ready to go. In general, it's a good idea to have all of your sketches have this little lock icon. 
So we've got the outside of our box. Now let's make the inside. I'm going to click up here to our Modify tab. Here we have a whole bunch of things that we can do to modify existing geometries. In this case, I'm going to choose our Offset tool. I'm going to go to our outside box and I'm going to drag this slider in. This offsets the outline that we've already created by a certain distance that we can define here. This is going to be the wall thickness of our box. So in our case, I'm going to go ahead and choose that I want this wall thickness to be 4 millimeters. Now notice, these walls look pretty thin. What if I were to say 3D print this and then decide, actually this box is way too fragile for me. Again, I could go ahead and double click. I could say, actually I want this to be 6 millimeters. And it would go ahead and update that design. The goal for all of this constraining and sketching and dimensioning is for us to be able to change any of these numbers at any time and for our model to still make sense. Sometimes you might over constrain or get stuck, and that's okay. Just take a step back, remove a constraint or two, and try a different approach. It's like solving a puzzle, there's always a solution. Now I want to show you a cool trick. Dimensions can be based on anything. You can even reference other dimensions in your model. All I have to do is click on whatever dimension we want to reference and modify it however I see fit. I could say D4 plus 20. This would make our wall 220 millimeters wide. And we can see if I were to update our original dimension that we're referencing, it updates both sides, not just one. This can be a powerful tool for making your models very easy to update. Also, if a dimension is cluttering up your space, you can always just click it once and drag it out of the way to make it a little easier to work with. Now let's add some feet to our box. I'm going to choose our circle tool and just draw four circles at any points around here. They're not going to be all the same size. It's okay, we can fix that with our equal constraint. So all I have to do is click each of our four circles. I'm holding down the shift key to select all. And then I'm going to press our equal constraint. Now, whenever any one of these changes size, they all change size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of them and I'm going to say, I want this circle to be uh, 20 millimeters is probably plenty fine. That's a little less than an inch. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want this circle with our dimension tool to be right about 35, oops, goodness, 35 millimeters from each edge. I think that that should be plenty inset enough for it to not be super noticeable when our box is sitting in 3D. I'll explain that here in a second. We're going to do exactly like we did before. We're going to choose our line tool, except this time I'm going to click over here to our line type. I'm going to choose to make it a construction line. This basically just says I'm going to make a line that is only for my reference. Notice it's dashed. It looks different from the rest of our lines. And when I hover over this, I can select it. It knows that it's a closed shape. But over here, it's not shading anything in for me. That's because it knows it's just for reference. I'm going to double click, delete. I'm going to go back and make our construction line. Again, we know that it's selected over here. Now I'm just going to click each of these four points. And there we go. Now each of these circles is bound to our little rectangle that we just drew, and we're gonna constrain it exactly like we did the outside, right? So I'm just gonna take each of these lines, I'm gonna say I want you to be horizontal, and I want this line to be vertical, and I want this line to be vertical. And now, all we have to do is say, I want you to be 35 millimeters too. And I want you to be 35 millimeters. 
Now we have feet that are always going to be inset on our box by the exact same amount, no matter what happens to any of the outside of our design. And there you have it, a perfectly modeled base for our box that we can use to turn into a 3D object. Practice with these concepts, get used to dimensioning, get used to constraints, and soon you will be sketching like a pro. So, I'll catch you in the next video, we'll bring the sketches to life in 3D.